Hakuna matata Chakula afya kituyo Wacha mocha duga yako Kwa ajili ya ufumbuzi yako yote ya afya Kwa sababu wote wako marumu Afya mahitaji Chini kizo la damu High cholesterol Kupoteza uzito Ugonjo wa kisukari Na kwa erection Sisi ndio wenye nguvu Blue Express na Nyikundu Express Capsule Uhakika ya patia kila mwanaume Kumuda kudumu Election na moja saa ya kutumia product yetu Kati so hizi kuongeza fraha ya kijinjisha kwa wewe na mpenzi wako Kutowa roko ngumu erection Lerif kutoka kumagma pema Wito sasa kwa utaratibu Sifuri, mbiri, sifuri, tatu, nane, tisa, mbiri, nane, saba Au sifuri, saba, tisa, tatu, sifuri Tanu, tanu, saba, ine, tatu, sifuri Sisi tuko katika kumina moja Warren Street, London W moja T, tanu, elogi Welcome to Uganda Vision. My name is Miriam, and that's Miriam Kigenye. But now, I'm going to sing a little bit of a song. I'm going to sing a little bit of a song. I'm going to sing a little bit of a song. I'm going to sing a little bit of a song. I'm going to sing a little bit of a song. I'm going to sing a little bit of a song. I'm going to sing a little bit of a song. I'm going to sing a little bit of a song. I'm going to sing a little bit of a song. I'm going to sing Wanyankore, agandi, ni marunji, mi ni marunji, wachori, kopa ngoko, ope, wali wate ya aye. Okay, now we're going to, oh yes, my Ghanians, I have not forgotten about you. It is say, it is say. And here we have the first lady of Uganda, beautiful Mrs. Janet Museven, also the minister of Karamoja, giving a speech during the convention here in the UK. It was brilliant. I was there. You missed. If you weren't there, this is your chance. Stay tuned. You are going to love it. I shall see you soon. Miriam. The First Lady of the Republic of Uganda and Minister of Karamoja Affairs, Honorable Janet Karamoseven. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, the Right Honorable Speaker of Ugandan Parliament, the Honorable Ministers who are present here today, Ambassador John Raviomere, Uganda's friend, Mrs. Linda Choka, who is present here with us, the organizers of this conference, leaders of uh, Uganda's community living in London, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. It is a pleasure for me to be here with you today. And I'd like to begin by thanking you for thinking about this and planning to ensure that this function happens as it is this day. I bring you greetings from the President and all the people of Uganda. And it is good to know that people, who, uh, people of Uganda who live in London are still interested to know about what is happening in Uganda and especially in a corner like Karamoja, which many people don't really care about. As you are aware, I came here in answer to your invitation by your chairman of the convention, Mr. Willie Mutenza, and the topic 
I was requested to share with you is my experience, uh, successes and challenges of my work in Karamoja. I honestly hope that you have the patience to listen to the story I want to tell you about Karamoja. Karamoja is situated in the northeastern part of Uganda and it occupies an area of about 27,000 square kilometers. The sub-region consists of seven districts. People who have heard about Karamoja think that it's merely a district, but it's a sub-region and it consists of seven districts, namely Moroto, Amdat, Nakapirpirit, Lapak, Kotido, Kabong, and Abim. Although the population of Karamoja is about 1.1 million people presently, it is comprised of 11 different social groupings with largely uh, similar dialects, with the exception of a few that are quite distinct. I was given this assignment in Karamoja in 2009. And the Karamoja subregion at that time had just been through a drought for three years. It was dry, the people had the shortage of food, but surprisingly, their cattle were not as thin as I would have expected. There was a shortage of water, both for people and for animals. The situation was bleak, and people had no hope for anything to change. And perhaps some of you know the expression in Uganda that was so common, when, where people said that the rest of Uganda cannot wait for Karamoja to develop. Therefore, my first task was to conduct a monitoring tour of all the 41 sub-counties of the region of Karamoja to understand the development and challenges of the people of Karamoja, to dialogue with the grassroots populations through these community interactions. And I was, I was exposed to the pains and suffering of the ordinary families in Karamoja. I touched the depth of the tragedy of many years of isolation of this community, and the despair of our people was truly emotionally draining. In my hands, I heard children debilitated by acute malnutrition while talking to mothers whose only hope was the next supply of irregular food rations from humanitarian agencies. I knew then that we had a monumental responsibility to get our people out of abject poverty and to lead them to the path of prosperity, which is where we are as a country in Uganda. Some few years before that, the president had pitched camp in Karamoja for a whole month. And he had launched the disarmament exercise. Therefore, that was ongoing. But the poverty levels were the engine that drove conflict and insecurity in the region. Therefore, there was need to get God's own inspiration and wisdom that would breathe life back to this devastated region of our country. I don't know how many of you know the biblical story quoted in scripture in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 37, which talks about a valley of bones. If you know it, then you will understand that if God could raise the valley of the dry bones and make it into a standing army of Israel, then Karamoja was nothing to God, for God can do all things. 
Thank you. Therefore, our work in Karamoja started with a lot of prayer and believing God to lead our plans. We set to work beginning with the cooperation between us and UPDF. We reinforced the disarmament exercise by including the Karamajong elders who helped to mobilize the youth for peace. The police galvanized the numbers to ensure that law and order is in place and LDUs were trained by police to ensure that communication at the grassroots was easy because LDUs are Karamajong. As security forces continued to stabilize villages and communities, we started new initiatives on food production. The Ministry of Karamoja under the Office of the Prime Minister launched a comprehensive food security plan for Karamoja. The plan in essence was to consolidate the approach towards a transformed productive system. However, there was need for some emergency measures. Therefore, we came up with a short-term solution to get the population back into the mode of growing food for themselves instead of just relying on food aid. Because we recognize that the women who formed the bulk of farmers in Karamoja, as they do elsewhere in Africa, were too weak and they were too discouraged to plow and to plant enough to get them out of the vicious cycle of famine and food relief. We therefore initiated a tractor hire scheme whereby a commercial farm was brought in to plow, to harrow, and plant a certain agreed acreage for identified vulnerable households and women's groups to ensure such households would harvest adequate quantities of food. My ministry and NADS and the, under the Ministry of Agriculture and other donor agencies supplied seeds and other planting materials. Initially, we opened up some 2,300 acres of land for vulnerable families at that time. But in the last season, we have opened up just over 20,000 acres and planted food in all the districts of Karamoja. This is over and above what the farmers managed to do for themselves. Presently, some able farmers make independent arrangements with commercial farms to hire tractors to open up land. Some others already are requesting government to assist them purchase tractors. And still others are beginning to discuss ways they can come together as farmer associations in order to bring to bring in big harvests, manage their produce better, and obtain better prices on the market for their produce. Therefore, I can assure you present here today that the mindset of the people in Karamoja are already changing. And I think it is important to note that when we first started this mission, 70% of the population of people in Karamoja we are living on food aid, but today the food insecure families are only 10% of that group. Water. The government of Uganda put in place a framework to guide peace, recovery, and development in the whole of northern region and Karamoja. It is indeed called, in short, PRDP, which covers the whole of that region. It was under the, that program that we set to provide water, both for animals and for human consumption in Karamoja. By the end of this year, sorry, we hope to have in place at least 15 parish dams, because under this program, we plan to provide at least one dam per parish for animals. And because Karamoja region has 177 parishes, so must the valley tanks be. 
Therefore, the remaining parish dams from the 15 which we'll provide this year, the rest will be constructed under the Northern Uganda Social Action Fund, NUSAF2, that program which commences at the end of this year. Furthermore, the Ministry of Water, which is mandated to provide water reservoirs in the country, has constructed one such reservoir per district uh, in Karamoja. When all these water points are completed, we believe there will be sufficient water for animals and for irrigation-assisted agriculture. Um, now, on this water, again, we find we, we have boreholes for domestic use. And on this one, we are working with UNICEF to ensure repair or drilling where necessary so that we can ensure clean water for communities wherever they live. We want to fit solar pumps on each borehole so that communities can be empowered to grow vegetables around the water source using drip irrigation, thus improving the national, uh, the national status, the, national, the nutritional status of households in Karamoja. Community empowerment. This is another program. This is a program we designed specifically to try and bridge the gap left by cattle rustling, uh, which in some cases truly left the families too vulnerable to know how to survive. Therefore, in the effort to motivate such families, we provide livestock such as cattle or goats to some women and youth groups, and we include oxen so that we can enable people to revive the use of ox plows for agriculture, and this program is also ongoing. Prevention for cattle rustling and thefts. In order to curb cattle thefts, we started an ele electronic branding exercise of all the animals in Karamoja, and you've just watched it there happening also. This is a practice where an electronic chip is put in the stomach of a cow with all information, e.g. the name of the owner, his locality, the color of the animal, etc. And if the animal is stolen, it can be tracked, and when you get it, you can easily read the information through the electro electronic monitor, and then the cow can be relocated to its owner. This form of cattle branding has helped so much to minimize cattle rustling in Karamoja. The people have regained the confidence that one can actually keep their animals once branded, and so far we have branded over 80,000 heads of cattle and the program is still ongoing. I am glad to report. I am glad to report that the people of Karamoja have embraced and appreciated this intervention, and actually, even neighboring districts have requested for this service to be extended to their livestock as well. On education. In the education sector, Karamoja has lagged behind, as you all know, because of various challenges. Some of these include infrastructure, school buildings and staff houses, um, lifestyle and attitudes of communities leading to low enrollment and high school dropout rates. It is appalling to note that despite the progress the country has made in education, Karamoja is only still at 12% literacy rate. So you can imagine just how low that is. In response to this, the government of Uganda, assisted by our partners in development, like Irish Aid, have constructed new staff houses and classrooms. We will continue on this road to consolidate these achievements through the Northern Uganda Social Action Fund in the next three years. As part of the affirmative action for Karamoja under the Universal Primary Education, UPE, 
and universal secondary education programs, Karamoja children access free education and 100 scholarships for tertiary education are set aside for Karamajong students every year. Government also plans to build model boarding, uh, boarding primary and secondary schools throughout the region, complete with teachers' houses so that children are taught, fed, and kept in school full term instead of dropping out. The health sector. Provision of health services has remained a big challenge in Karamoja. Consequently, the region continues to report high levels of maternal and infant mortality rates. The critical factors responsible for this are inadequate accommodation for health workers and incapacity to attract and retain qualified staff, thus making service delivery particularly difficult. Government has taken steps to address this by allocating resources through PRDP and NUSAF 2. Furthermore, two districts, sorry, two district hospitals, Abim and Moroto, have been elevated to the level of referral medical facilities for that region. We are also collaborating with private hospitals like Matanyi Missionary Hospital in Karamoja to train midwives and nurses who can be absorbed and will be absorbed in government health facilities. Now, government through the Ministry of Health and UNICEF has also been doing immunization, nutritional therapy, sanitation, and sensitization of communities on maternal and child health. In an effort to bring primary health care services closer to the people, UNICEF has helped us to establish village health teams in communities across the region of Karamoja. Village health teams are small health clinics at the village level. The roads in Karamoja region, uh, like any other infrastructure, suffered many years of lack of maintenance, and because of insecurity, the road network was not used. Therefore, there was no maintenance for a long time, and in the rainy seasons, floods would wash away bridges. For example, in the recent rains which we've had in, in this year, the floods have washed away some bridges, and parts of the gravel roads generally made the road surface unmotorable. Government, however, has decided to upgrade some of the roads in Karamoja to make them paved. Some funds have been secured to commence work on Moroto and Akapiripiriti Road. The Ministry of Works through the National Road Authority has also advised public-private partnerships that you just heard the Minister of, of Finance talk about here for the following roads. Um, some two roads that you probably won't remember the names, but private, sorry, uh, public-private partnership is, a, is a, a program we use in Karamoja to try to change our road network. We believe that work will commence on these roads in the near future under public-private partnership. There is no doubt we know that that improvement in infrastructure would boost development and will open the region to further investment opportunities. Now, we have done some improved housing that you also just saw there. The Karamajong have for a long time lived in grass-thatched houses. In community, in community settlements, locally referred to as Manyata. Knowing the role of good housing in promoting better quality of life and taking the aspirations of ordinary people to experience social recovery and transformation, we piloted the construction of permanent housing settlements in Nadunget, in Achedere village, in Kampswahiri in Moroto town, and Lengedrat in uh, Nakapiripirit district. Each organized homestead has 20 homes 
fully connected with solar lighting. Around that home, there are schools, there are water sources, and an, an agricultural production area. This will act as an incentive for future development of permanent homes in Karamoja. Rural electrification. Government has completed the construction of electricity lines in the following areas. Muyembe, Namalu, Amdat, and Soroti, Katakui, Moroto. We are also exploring solar power initiatives with private sector players, which is something you people can be interested in. Ladies and gentlemen, as we look to the future, we will continue to work towards the region, producing its own food, engaging in other development activities, and with improved infrastructure. Therefore, we shall attract investors to help the region harness, harness its natural resources and potential so that prosperity can become a reality in this region. We hope to achieve all these within the framework of Karamoja Integrated Development Program, which enables all stakeholders to contribute and fit together as equal partners for the progress of Karamoja. Karamoja is a region full uh, of opportunity for private entrepreneurs and investors from within and from outside Uganda. Just to give you a glimpse of what the region can offer, Karamoja is home to one of the most beautiful and highly endowed game parks in our country, the Kidepo National Game Park. And the stunning and unique scenery in the region and the undisturbed habitat offer tremendous opportunity for ecotourism. The vast territory with its rich volcanic soils is a great advantage for mechanized commercial crop and livestock agriculture to feed the market within Uganda as well as the regional and global demands. Furthermore, the region is rich with various minerals, many of them ready for exploitation. Avenues for green energy production, including solar and geothermal renewable energy, are unparalleled. Opportunities for large forest plantations to offer uh, carbon credit to partners from industrialized countries as well as contributing to global warming and climate change mitigation and adaptation. This meeting, focusing on sustainable prosperity, should embrace these opportunities and encourage all Ugandans and friends, partners in development and entrepreneurs to pursue these opportunities in Karamoja. In so doing, we shall have a win-win situation where profits are shared and the people of Karamoja can truly test prosperity like the rest of the world. Thank you so much and I hope, I'm sure you found that speech very educative and informative. Oh my God, what have I got for you if you missed it? Again, in that same convention, this is exclusive only for you, my viewers, with this lovely, lovely presenter. I'll give you a clue, just a small one. Her name is Jackie, you finish the rest. Enjoy, Miriam. <laughs> Yes, good evening ladies and gentlemen, and I've got to say this is an honor for Uganda Vision to be here at Troxy 490 Commercial Road, 190 Uganda Vision as usual. I'm here with the most important person you guys would ever see on Uganda Vision. Yes, I am honored. I'm literally shaking. I am here with the one and only, the first lady. I'm going to put her on camera. We're going to find out exactly what she's doing, what she's up to. And what are the plans we hear in Karamoja? Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce our first lady. Good evening there, ma'am. Good evening to you. And how are we today? We're fine, <laughs> thank you. How are you finding London? It's warm for a change. <laughs> <laughs> but September, it is very warm, isn't yes, it? Yes. And how are you finding the people? 
of Uganda here in diaspora at the moment? I was very happy to meet Ugandans here who are happy, who are kind, and uh, I really do appreciate what they are doing. Brilliant. Mm. I hope we make you proud, of course, as you guys are based back home. Mm. Um, there is so much peace and economical growth with Uganda, what's happened within the last 30 years. How has the current government managed to keep the peace and, of course, developing Uganda? Well, the Uganda government put in place a government that is law-abiding and it ensures that every Ugandan is under the law. And when you uh, run a government that is constitutional, that is law-abiding, every person is free to live in that country and to have the confidence to know that they won't be intimidated. Nobody is above the law. Whoever does anything wrong will answer to the law. And Uganda, therefore, became a free country and really modern and democratic. That's exactly what we needed, of course, to move forward. Yes. You do do a lot of projects in yes. Karamoja. Yes. We just saw a very beautiful video today here yes. at the um, convention. Yes. What are the developments going? How are they going in Karamoja? Karamoja is trying to um, put in place a system that will answer to the needs of the people, first and foremost. And therefore, that is why, as you saw, mm. we started with agriculture. Yes because we wanted to ensure that our people will not live by food aid, that they can produce their own food mm -hmm. and every family can have sufficient food and even have some food to sell for income. income yes, and uh, that is because we believe that for any family to, to think about anything else, they must first and foremost be food secure. Yeah. And so it is the time for Karamoja now and uh, we want to ensure that they have all the needs for the family to thrive, okay. to prosper, okay. because they take care of animals. That's why we're trying to provide water, mm -hmm. both for animals and for the people. Mm -hmm. We're trying to ensure that the animals are safe, mm -hmm. that they won't have to steal to, to leave, mm -hmm. because cattle wrestling was really driven because people were trying to find a way to survive. So now their cattle are safe, people are producing food, they can have an income, mm -hmm. and that way we can start talking about other things. Of and uh, we are talking about uh, education, mm -hmm. which was uh, not in Karamoja for, for a long time. Mm -hmm. We're talking about health, we're talking about uh, housing, okay. so that people can begin to consider and to live a, a modern life okay. in Karamoja. That's brilliant. Yeah. And speaking about Karamoja development, um, with investments that we've done in diaspora, is there any projects or any achievements or you could say for people to invest in Karamoja? Yes, of course. I was talking about uh, road, road network in okay. Karamoja and the fact that we're trying to do public and uh, private partnership in Uganda. This is a program that government is trying to, to build up, to include the private sector, to work in partnership with government, mm -hmm. and they can do um, road network, they can build uh, the health centers, mm -hmm. they can build schools, anything. If you need to invest, mm -hmm. you can do it if you have sufficient funds on your own, yes. and you're welcome to do that. Mm -hmm. But if you want to work in partnership with government, you are also welcome to do that, yes. With partnership with the government, do they need a proposal or who do they approach if they want to do that? They approach a, a, a ministry that deals with that particular project you want to do and that ministry will lead you to know how to go about it. Oh, that's good news. Yes. Regarding the East African Federation, how yeah. are we doing? How is the development going for you guys? We think we are doing very well. Okay. We are hoping that we do, we do it sooner mm -hmm. and that uh, East Africa can become one country. Mm -hmm. But so far, we think we are doing fine and we have both Burundi and Rwanda also joining, uh, have joined the East African community. 
and so we think we are doing fine. Oh, that's good. Obviously, that would help us to innovate more with tourists to come to Uganda as well. Absolutely. There will be no borders in the region. <laughs> yeah. It will be one country, so people will have the freedom to just go anywhere mm -hmm. in, in the region and know because they have uh, the same money, the same, uh, money mm -hmm. that people can get jobs in, in any country. Okay. And um, life will be much easier. There won't be any custom barriers. Mm -hmm. They won't mm -hmm. be... So people, the life will be different, yeah, really, yeah. easier, and jobs will be available in any country of East Africa, yeah. and children would go to school any place they want to be, yeah. and so life would be easier, and uh, governments would uh, find revenue easily than yeah. they do now in each individual country. Oh, so we are hoping that the East African community can really become a reality sooner than later. Oh, that's mm. good news. We understand you're a very strong Christian lady. Yes. We'd like you to give some advice to the youth that are based here in the UK and of course those in Europe. Some advice for them to be on the straight path, of course, but not forgetting their roots back home. What advice have you got for them? I am uh, a very strong Christian, yes. And um, it is it is such a, a good opportunity for me to be able to speak to the youth mm. in Uga uh, from Uganda who are living here. Okay. I'd love to know that, that our children who live here remain Ugandan mm. at heart and, okay. and remain proud of who they are mm. Mm. and uh, ensure that they will not catch HIV and AIDS, okay. ensure that they will keep our values the values of God-fearing, the, the values of respecting their families, the values of dressing like Africans, mm -hmm. speaking like Africans, of course. and <laughs> truly being proud to be who they are. And uh, we hope that they want so much to come to Uganda, well, mm -hmm. to Africa, yes, to Uganda, Ugandans who live here, that they look forward to going to Uganda, mm -hmm. and because people in countries like this think that if Africans come to Europe and have an opportunity to get education here and work here, that they don't want to go back to their homes. I would be very proud mm -hmm. to know that our children really want to come back okay. to live in Uganda live in and work there. Yes. yes, and work there. That's very brilliant. What do you like to do in your spare time? <laughs> I read a lot in my okay. spare time, and now I have grandchildren, oh, so yeah. I take some time <laughs> to be with my grandchildren. Do you spoil your grandchildren like A week? lot. <laughs> That's brilliant. It has been a pleasure to meet you, like I said, an honor indeed for Uganda Vision to be here with you. Thank you for giving us the time, and when we come to Uganda, we'll be paying you a visit, <laughs> and also to come up to Karamoja to visit your projects. Yes. Okay? Very happy. Thank you very much, madam. Thank you for having us. Thank you so much. Thank you so much again, viewers, for staying with us. We're back at this time with the selection of the fabulous, wonderful music. I do like to dance now and then. I'm sure you do as well. I hope you find this enjoyable. Just get your glass of water or wine. In fact, if you're driving, don't touch any alcohol. Just enjoy this music and let's dance together. Hola.
let them know Dangelo I'm the Apollo Vizai So you can never put me down Just let them know Dangelo I'm the Apollo Vizai I'm Jagala I'm Matira Je vais vous donner la tête. 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 Je vais
You go dance, we go dance, we did dance. It's not time, but now I'm going to be in the video. I'm going to in. I hope you enjoyed. I enjoyed myself, and I'm sure you did as well. To gain that, to cover dance, Uganda Vision. 
Channel 182, Sky Television. That is every Mondays and every Sundays. Stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. Every Mondays and Sundays, Ugandan Vision. Thank you so much for watching. And see you again next time. This is Miriam. Enjoy. God bless you. Goodbye for now. www.notchcelebshowbiz.com Noach Celebs Showbiz